Hello students, welcome back. In um, continuation with our previous video, where we had been studying about on the job training in our previous video. Now in this video, I shall be uh, instructing you uh, relating to off the job training technique, what you see towards the uh, right hand side. So off the job training technique is again uh, comprised of uh, about uh, six uh, methods. So uh, the first one, it's, there is something known as lectures. All of us know what exactly are lectures, but uh, our focus over here is to try to understand where exactly a lecturing technique is uh, helpful. So uh, whenever oral instructions are given, and uh, when we are addressing a large number of uh, employees and giving them oral information, oral instructions, all these things comprise us of lecturing technique. So uh, normally uh, lectures uh, work out in those uh, situations where the number of employees to be trained are many. So first of all, yeah, by the way, what do we understand by off the job training technique? Off the job training technique is where the employees are learning away from their place of work, away from the site of work. So uh, in case of lectures, it will be conducted either in any kind of a classroom, what uh, they have booked outside the uh, office, or it may be conducted in a conference room itself, which is there inside the office, but which is away from the place of work of the candidate or uh, it might be uh, booked uh, or based on a it might be conducted in some kind of a seminar hall as well uh, anywhere outside the office so uh, what, what uh, purpose does a lecturing technique serve over here so as i had already told you in case a sales manager or a zonal head has to educate a large number of sales persons regarding the features and the functionality or any other thing of a new product which has been introduced by the company. Obviously, contacting each and every salesman individually, salesperson individually, and uh, giving information regarding the product may not be a suitable thing because there are so many people to be addressed. Even in case we delegate the work to others to train a, a certain group of people here and there, again, uh, somewhere time is getting consumed and a work is getting affected somewhere so instead if we can just call all the sales force let's supposing there are 100 or 200 people call all of them to one room and give them uh, information relating to whatever it may be relating to the company whether it's a product or whether it may be the company's values or ethics or whatever it can be uh, or a change in the organizational structure or a change in the uh, way in which the departments are functioning whatever it might be if you're addressing a large gathering lectures will be uh, one of the most uh, effective techniques in this case see instead of lecturing we can also there is one more option available we can just uh, give printed pamphlets to these salespeople so that they themselves can read the um, uh, information about the new product the functionality features working what kind of customer complaints can be expected and how they can be addressed. All these issues can be uh, given in the form of uh, some kind of a manuals or instructions, printed, written or printed instructions, but it's not uh, going to be uh, economical. It will be expensive. The cost of type, uh, printing so many uh, manuals or pamphlets will be quite expensive. So instead of that, if uh, we can just uh, book some kind of a, uh, a conference room or something for a much lower price uh, th this technique will definitely be worthwhile then have a look at the second form of uh, off the job training technique there is something known as audio visual technique so in an audio visual uh, based training technologies related to films or ppts or uh, maybe even video conferencing all these things can be used and uh, accordingly training can be done so I'll give you one example over here, Ford Motor Company again, uh, in order to give training to their dealers. So uh, yeah, just to have a little background information here. Uh, normally, many of these big companies, they give, uh, they have very close relationship with their suppliers 
and they also have very close relationship with the dealers also see take an instance of dealers dealers are the ones who are actually going to sell the cars so obviously and only if they sell the cars in um, a convincing manner more customers are going to buy which is ultimately uh, going to boil down to the success of ford over here compared to its competitors so uh, in order to uh, give instruction to the dealers as to how to exactly um, sell products to the customers if at all customer complaints come how to address those customer complaints on all these issues training when it had to be given to these dealers it did it in the form of a kind of a video which was being played so they just relayed a video uh, and they in that video a hypothetical situation was created wherein the dealers they are actually actors in those videos so these actors in those videos are just uh, giving um, examples on when a customer gives so and so complaint what are the ways in which those dealers are reacting to those complaints so based on observing those videos these dealer uh, people also uh, uh, who uh, ford is giving training they understand that okay when a customer complaint comes like this this is how we have to react this is how we have to guide the customers so all that they learned by way of uh, watching that video a simulated situation where a customer is complaining something and the way in which the dealer is reacting to that customer in that video based on that uh, simulated video or that hypothetical uh, situation created the dealers over here will learn what ford expects out of them while dealing with their final customers move on to the third uh, technique here there is something called as simulation so what we understand by simulating simulating is uh, also known as vestibule training where the employees learn on similar equipment on equipment which is similar to what they will be using had they been on the job but this uh, uh, makeshift equipment in which they are trying to learn it is located in a facility which is away from the place of work which is off the place of work of the job so uh, the, uh, i'll give you one example here see take an example of um, now when is simulated equipment used that is equipment which is similar to the actual equipment which you use on the job but it's not the actual one it is just a model of the actual equipment what people will be using on their job and it's away from the facility i'll give you one instance here take an example of a pilot now to train a pilot it would be too dangerous to make them to you sitting along with the pilot make them take off and make them land and manage the turbulence or whatever it might be that you may be facing in mid air it would be highly dangerous because obviously this person is just learning so any misstep and it's going to cause a serious accident so obviously it would be too dangerous to train a pilot on an actual aircraft but however there are simulators which are created the uh, place of whether the cockpit of the pilot that is so this cockpit where um, the pilots are uh, actually uh, handling the various instruments for flying the aircraft a similar model of that cockpit will be created in another location it will have the same dials the same instruments the same readings all those things what will be there in an actual aircraft will be there in this environment also so here the trainee pilot can actually learn what is the way in which the joystick might have to be handled how to handle turbulence how to um, communicate with the uh, 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 radio control operators radio control towers all these uh, details will be instructed to them in a safe and a secure environment so uh, this is where uh, uh, this uh, it, it uh, helps actually this uh, concept of simulation but however it's an expensive technique creating an environment similar to where a pilot actually works in an aircraft is uh, it's quite an expensive thing now uh, there are other examples also where simulation can be uh, carried out see again 
assembly line workers also there may be some factories where there is a separate um, location which looks exactly like the production line but it's just a it's just a uh, imitative model of the production line which may not work exactly like how the production line or the conveyor belt and all those things works but it's sufficient to train the worker so for example in the production line the actual conveyor belt may be connected to another uh, 10 machines outside but how and it will be um, uh, operated electronically but here probably in this practice station uh, the simulated uh, environment conveyor belt can probably be just operated by rotating some wheel and it will be manual so such that it gives a chance for the worker to uh, uh, practice uh, working on that conveyor belt so normally these workers who are working on this conveyor belt they have to be extremely quick the as the products are passing through the conveyor belt they might whenever they feel that some products are not placed properly it may be piled up in the conveyor belt but in order to move to the next machinery from one machinery when it has to move to the next machinery as it's going through the conveyor belt if it's piled up it may not work well in the next machinery so they may have to stand there to sort it out properly or uh, whatever they feel might have been defective they might have to just pick it up from there so production is not completely automated as such you need people also to make sure that the automation is working on well so uh, when you are training these people obviously when you put them on the uh, job in the actual production line in the or the actual assembly line uh, you may end up obstructing the production process somewhere so it may slow down the production process also so to avoid that you are putting them in an imitation of the actual conveyor belt somewhere else and trying to uh, make them learn through that way and uh, i'll take another example also you have the case of firearms so in, in case of police training or in case of an army training or whatever it might be uh, when uh, they are practicing uh, uh, when they are trying to practice targeting a place or uh, to shoot or anything like that so you obviously cannot take the person uh, if it's training for an army you cannot obviously take him to uh, the in, uh, to the um, enemy's frontier and uh, point out one enemy and tell uh, an enemy country and tell them okay shoot this uh, guard from that enemy country it's not possible because uh, obviously there there is a chance of a loss of life over there in case you are not careful so uh, in such situation for practice of firearms what is normally done a certain target will be given uh, in the in any form it might be that particular target that bulls eye that particular target they are supposed to shoot so this is also a, a, a kind of a simple simulation exercise pilots i already told you space missions take an example of space missions also before um, going to space the astronauts a space suit will be uh, created for those astronauts we have to test that space suit in order to test that space suit you need to create similar conditions what the astronaut will be going through in space so uh, you might have to reduce the pressure to zero you might have to uh, probably uh, reduce the temperature levels also or heat up the uh, environment whatever it might be um, all these uh, uncomfortable situations you will have to create in your lab so that you put the astronaut inside the lab and see whether they are able to withstand all those extreme conditions so the environment created in the lab is a simulated or a similar environment uh, similar to what the astronaut will be encountering in space so uh, this is also a case where simulation uh, has to be undertaken but the problem is yeah some uh, simulation uh, exercises are more costly but as some of them are yes they are fairly affordable Uh, take one example of an affordable simulation see take an example again when uh, you are recruiting a nurse now uh, let us say we uh, one of the tasks of this nurse is to handle small babies and newborn children now obviously when you are training the nurse you cannot uh, risk uh, or uh, during the training uh, this thing uh, during their um, uh, nursing course what they are uh, undergoing you cannot obviously uh, bring real life babies to them and ask them to handle those babies and all those things it's not possible so instead what will be there is dolls which are the size of the babies 
and which also have uh, movements similar to the limbs of those dolls, like their hands, legs, head, and all those things are movable. So such kind of dolls will normally be purchased, uh, will normally be used for training these nurses. So this is one way in which, again, a simpler form of simulation uh, I have just illustrated to you. Uh, have a look at the next technique, case analysis. So case study analysis, uh, you might have done uh, many case studies all this while in your uh, program. So you might be knowing what it is exactly. So what is a case study as, as such? How was case analysis done? In, the, in case analysis, the trainee, the uh, employee who's taking up training, they will be given a case in a paper or whatever it might be, uh, they will be given a case. They have to read that case. Now that case is indicative of some problem which the organization is facing, whether it's some kind of a technical problem, whether it is some problem related to social issues or whether it's some kind of a, uh, some kind of a dilemma that the ethical or any kind of a dilemma that the organization is going through. So an example of what problem the organization can be going through is uh, probably there might be some kind of a poor uh, leadership from the top management's perspective or there might be a lot of conflicts between two uh, groups of employees in the organization. So some kind of a problem is given to you in that caselet. So this trainee, what they are required to do is they are supposed to read the case. They are uh, supposed to describe the problem which is given in the case and interpret the problem which is given in the case. Accordingly, they are uh, required to come out with certain solutions on how to address that problem, how to handle that problem. Once each of these trainees, once each of these employees come out with a certain solution, as a group, all the employees will be put together. Now, whatever solutions they have come up with, they need to discuss their solution uh, with the group and they need to justify their interpretation of the problem and what recommendations they have come up with. All these things a discussion is supposed to do, uh, supposed to happen. So the uh, role of the trainer in this case is just to sit back and uh, observe and also to uh, create uh, a learning environment among the trainees. So they are supposed to give hints here and there. And they are uh, supposed to make sure that the employees have understood the case properly and um, they, they, they're also having a proper uh, understanding of the management concept which is involved in that case. So uh, again, a very uh, similar situation what is taught in many business schools. One of the favorite techniques of many B schools is a case analysis method. Another um, uh, interesting technique which is adopted by companies and adopted by many business schools as well, especially many international business schools. They adopt something called as a role-playing technique. So what happens in a role-playing technique is the trainees, that is the employees, they act out a particular role um, in an attempt to perform the behavior which is required of that role. Okay. So what they do is, whether it is the role of a, a CEO or whether it is the role of a supervisor or whether it is the role of an interviewer who is uh, interviewing their candidates. So all these roles or any of these roles, the trainee will be given. They are supposed to enact those roles. They are supposed to uh, behave in those roles. So um, how exactly uh, this happens is like in many popular uh, management programs, especially as I already told you, in many of the international universities, a certain, uh, uh, at the end of, uh, at, at the closing of uh, every classroom session or most of the classroom sessions, the last 15 to 20 minutes of the class will be allocated for role playing. So in, a role, in this, uh, what will be happening is that student, will be given um, a certain role. Now, under the role what they are in, they are supposed to uh, negotiate. Now, the negotiation uh, and uh, be, su be successful in the process of negotiation also. The negotiation can be relating to increase in the salary or the negotiation can be relating, uh, relating to receiving jobs 
can be relating to striking some kind of an international business deal something relating to ethical dilemmas a negotiation can be relating to any of these things so uh, the purpose of this uh, role playing activity here is to improve the negotiation skills of the candidate or it might be other things like improving their communication improving their um, interviewing skills interviewing uh, sorry uh, improving their leadership skills all these things will be a part of it and um, uh, one more example i can also give you see uh, in many of the companies again when a training is given to the supervisor one employee for whom training is given they will be taken they have to play the role of a supervisor if they are given that job and uh, the other uh, employees who are there in that group will take the role of the workers who are working under that supervisor accordingly a judgment can be made and uh, improvements can also be made for the um, employee who is being trained then finally you have computer based training so about computer based training uh, we will just uh, see in the next video thank you